Hey guys, with me is a brand new 2019 Honda Civic Si. And if you're in the market for a fun to drive daily driver, then this is the car you should be looking at. Honda packed 200 horsepower under the hood and mated it with a six speed manual. And on top of that, there's sports seats, limited slip differential, 18 inch alloy wheels, adaptive dampeners, and the list goes on and on and on. And even with all that, it still retains the practicality, utility, fuel economy of a normal Civic. So today I'm gonna to show you the ins and outs and also tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly of the Civic Si so you could decide if this is right for you. Stay tuned. First, a quick shout out to Honda of Lyle, which made this video possible. More information can be found about the dealership in the description below. All right, guys, let's start out by looking at the most controversial side of the Civic, and that's the front end. And I say it's controversial because this is really subjective in terms of your taste. For many, this is a good look. For many, this is too much. In terms of my opinion, I think this looks good. I think it complements the Civic Si really well. And I love the fact that all the chrome pieces have been replaced with black trim. I like the fact that you can see this trim comes out, covers the top part of the, the headlights and gives it that more aggressive look, like mean look, right? And the lower bumper is also different from a Civic and it just looks more sporty. And to me, I like it. I like it a lot, but I know that for some people, this is too much, this turns them off. However, it's important to note that this is already toned down from a Civic Type R, which is a lot more edgier, a lot more edgier, a lot more boy racer-like. For me, I think this is a really good balance and a really good front end for this Civic Si. What do you guys think? All right, guys, looking at the side view of the Civic Si, it doesn't look much different from a normal Civic, and that's not a bad thing because, in my opinion, the 10th generation Civic, the overall body, the lines, the stance, just looks good. And the Civic Si adds upon that. You do see that the overall car is lower to the ground. This gap between the fender and the tire is much smaller than a normal Civic. And these 18-inch alloy wheels look great. And that's pretty much it to the side view. All right, guys, so looking at the backside of this Civic Si, you can definitely tell it doesn't look like a normal Civic. You do get a spoiler, which is not unusual, but I think this actually looks pretty good. And then you do get this very aggressive bumper, which is very different from a normal Civic. And this does match the front. However, I'm not sure this is actually a good look. And also you do get a one piece exhaust, which uh, looks pretty nice. However, it's kind of like tucked in underneath. It would look a lot better if this was sticking out. However, because it's tucked in, if you're like standing here, you really can't see it. You have to like bend underneath to see it. But overall, I think Honda did a good job to make sure that if you're driving behind this car, you know that it's not a normal Civic. All right, so in the second row of the Civic Si, I gotta say, it is enormous back here. You don't get a whole lot back here, but you do get a lot of space. Um, look at me, I'm five feet 10. I got plenty of leg room, plenty of headroom. Overall width is good, and the seats are really comfortable. Um, so it is surprising how much room you have back here. I'm pretty sure two adults, maybe even three, could fit comfortably back here. And also car seats should have no problem fitting. All right, so behind the wheel of the Civic Si, let's start with the gauge cluster, which looks really futuristic. You do have one huge screen there and on the side fuel and temperature, which use, utilizes these like red bars, which also just makes it look different. And that's not a bad thing. Uh, zooming out at the steering wheel, it looks pretty good. Although I gotta say, this feels like vinyl, it doesn't feel like leather, but you do get nice stitching all around and you do get that on the seats as well. And this looks pretty normal like some of the other Honda cars I've reviewed. So looking at the center, this is a good looking entertainment system. Um, Honda brought back for 2019 a lot of the buttons and the volume knobs, so a lot of people is gonna like that. But overall, this is nice and clean. It is also very responsive, which, uh, which is nice. And then you move on from there, you do have a couple of buttons, one for uh, temperature, right? In terms of what you wanna set it at, auto sync, that's pretty standard. You do have some defrosters and a climate control here. And overall down here, you do have a USB plug and just just large room here, right? Like a cubby hole where you could put your phone and whatnot. 
Over here, you do see the really good looking short shifter, a six speed manual, and you do see that red stitching I talked about, just like the steering wheel, right? It's all around the car. Um, it feels good. I mean, it's a short throw, so um, it's not like some of the older cars where it's, it's a lot longer throw. So it actually feels really good. I'm gonna talk more about this when I take her out on the road. And over here, you do have electronic brake um, and a sport button, which actually does a lot. It firms up the suspension, it makes the steering tighter, it makes the, the throttle more aggressive. So I'm also gonna be testing that pretty soon. Now, moving on over here, this is where it gets interesting because normally you would just have a large bin over here, right? And you do still get that over here. You can see that there is room over there and you got a tray for your coins and so forth, right? But here's where it's interesting. You had two very large cup holders that also slide away to a bigger cup holder. So in case <laughs> these weren't big enough and these are already very massive, in case you wanted to have like a 64 ounce or something, um, there's room for that. <laughs> so the center console is actually very, very interesting, but also very intelligent because you could see this coin tray doesn't just slide over here. It slides all the way to the front. This armrest also goes backwards. So that way, these two cup holders are exposed. However, if you didn't want two cup holders exposed, you could do that and just have one and a half. So this is a really customizable center console, which is impressive. Um, up here, pretty standard. You do have a traditional sunroof with the controls over here. However, um, you know, the Honda Link and Honda SOS buttons, uh, those are not up here, which is uh, quite interesting because all the other Hondas do have them. Overall, I think this is a good-looking interior. You could see that you could see that there's carbon fiber trim. You know, most likely this is simulated, it's not real, but this looks pretty good combined with the silver trim on the doors and the overall design, the inside of this console and center dash and gauge cluster, everything. When you look at all that, it definitely has that sporty feel. All right, guys. So I'm behind the wheel of this Civic Si, still getting used to the clutch. I gotta say, the clutch is very, very forgiving. Those of you guys that are looking to learn how to drive a stick, um, you should look into a Civic. Now, this the Civic Si, the clutch is very forgiving. However, the catch point is really high off, so you kinda gotta get used to that. Once you get used to it, it's pretty good. Nice and smooth and quiet ride. And this is what you would expect in a Civic, right? Because this is meant to be a daily driver, um, visibility is great. Seating position is great. It's nice and quiet. I don't hear anything from the exhaust. They're very, very, very quiet. Even if it was simulated, like if they played like a lot of these other sports cars these days where they uh, they play fake exhaust note in inside the cabin, even that would be welcome. You know, when you turn on the sport mode, which is what I'm in right now, um, the gauge clusters all turn red. <laughs> like 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 something's gonna happen right like you're going to battle or something so that's kind of interesting if you're turning right it will show you what's in your blind spot because there is a camera under the mirror and that's something that's pretty cool i'm not sure i'm used to it i i, I would rather just look the brakes feel pretty good um not mushy at all um it is pretty linear so i do like that now, as for the seats, I got to say, you do have to be on the smaller side. They are very comfortable. These are actually very comfortable seats. They hold you in really well, like the back. I could definitely feel the bolsters uh, on my back and the bottom cushion too. It really hugs your, uh, your hips. Um, but I say you do have to be on the smaller side because there is a limit to them. And I do feel like my thighs and my butt is probably getting to the limit of what these seats could handle. Yeah, I mean, this car, I just went from 40 to about 70 right now. I mean, it it actually is very fast. In second, third, and fourth, you could definitely feel the torque because of the turbo. You could feel the torque. It's pretty quick. Um, now, it's not going to be the quickest car on the road. It's not going to be as fast as, say, a Mustang or Camaro, but definitely, definitely fun definitely fun so unlike the civic type r and the civic si 
it does not rev match for you. So if you're going down in gear, you do have to rev match. And that's like an art form in itself. A lot of the newer cars now, like Corvettes and Type R and Mustangs, they all rev match for you, Camaros. Um, so it kind of takes that fun away. Um, that is something you still have to do in a Civic, uh, in a Civic SI. We live in a world right now where everything is is being dumbed down, right? In terms of cars, everything is automatic, semi-automatic, paddle shifters, CVT that's simulating, shifting gears, all this stuff, right? It's all about smoothness, convenience, speed. However, the human element is taken away, right? Shifting or banging gears in a car is just nice. It's nice and it's fun. Um, it's simple to work on. It's it's it just does what you want. <laughs> um, so it's nice to drive a car that still has a manual gearbox in it. All right, guys. Let's conclude with the good, the bad, and the ugly about the Civic Si. In terms of the good, there's a lot um, because this is the Si edition. You do get the sportiness on top of a Civic, and that is a really good thing because the Civic was meant to be a daily driver. You get the practicality, right? You get the utility, you get the fuel economy, and it's affordable. And the Civic Si just builds on top of that. You get more horsepower, over 200 horsepower, which gives some life to the Civic, and it's actually pretty quick. The six-speed manual and the clutch is great. It makes your drive a whole lot funner, a lot more engaging, and the clutch is one of the best in the industry. The seats, is very supportive and it's quiet. The visibility is great. Steering feels great. Acceleration and brakes also feel great. The last thing is the exterior, which is controversial. You know, some people may like it, some people don't. For me, I like it. And I think that it is a really good balance between a normal Civic and a Civic Type R. Now, in terms of the bad, there's a few little minor things. Like the back bumper, I'm not a fan of. I know that they were trying to make it look more sporty. However, it just kind of looks weird with the black panels on each side. Um, the chrome exhaust should be sticking out more. And then moving to the back, it's kind of plain back there. There's really not that much, not even vents. This vinyl on top of the steering wheel feels a little bit cheap to me. But outside of those little things, there's really not much to it. In terms of ugly, I don't see anything that needs to be changed or fixed right away. And that's it. Lastly, let me talk about the price. This Civic Si comes in at $25,000, which is really affordable because if you look at the next step up, which is a Type R, which many dealerships are selling above MSRP, you're talking about $40,000 to $50,000. So you could get two of these SIs for the same price as a Type R. And to me, this is definitely the better value. All right, guys, that's it for this review. Make sure you hit the likes and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.